Live from London, this is BBC News. One person is dead and 21 injured after a shooting at a Super Bowl victory parade in Kansas City. A former military chief looks set to win Indonesia's presidential election. Unofficial results have him well ahead of his nearest rival. There's a warning that the number of anti-Semitic attacks in the UK nearly doubled last year, with some incidents involving children. And one of the top events in world cinema, the Berlin Film Festival, gets underway with some controversy over a decision by organisers. Hello and uh, welcome to BBC News. I'm Lequesta Burek. 22 people have been shot at a Super Bowl victory parade in Kansas City in the United States. At least one of the victims is dead. Seven have life-threatening injuries. The Kansas police chief said that three suspects were in custody and firearms had been recovered. But she added that the motive wasn't yet clear. Chaos broke out when shots were fired just west of Union Station. The train station is in downtown Kansas City. Thousands were celebrating the victory of the Kansas City Chiefs in American football's premier event. The BBC's Will Vernon reports now from Washington. OK, let's uh, look at some other stories now that are making uh, the headlines. And the Republican chairman of the House Intelligence Committee has warned of what it calls a serious national security threat to the United States. U.S. media reports say that the warning is related to a Russian attempt to develop a space-based nuclear weapon that could be used to target satellites. They quote sources are saying the weapon is not yet in orbit. Greece could become the first Christian Orthodox majority country to legalize same-sex marriage when its parliament votes on the measure later. The bill has been introduced by the country's centre-right Prime Minister, but around a third of his own MPs are expected to, rebe to rebel, meaning that he'll need the support of the left-wing opposition for it to pass. A rocket launch to take a robotic lander to the moon is due to take place in around an hour's time. The privately owned Nova Sea lander is carrying instruments to study precision landings, space weather and other phenomena on the lunar surface. It would be the first American moon landing in more than half a century. OK, now to the ex-Special Forces soldier who could be the next leader of the world's biggest Muslim nation. It's looking increasingly likely that Indonesia's Defence Minister and former military chief uh, Prabowo Subianto has won Wednesday's presidential election outright with no need for a runoff ballot. Though the full result won't be known until next month, Figures from officially approved pollsters put him on 58%, more than twice his closest rival. Mr. Prabowo, who has a questionable past human rights record, has claimed victory and urged Indonesians to unite. The two other contenders have alleged systematic fraud but not provided any evidence. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. BBC News, bringing you different stories from across the UK. Hi. For more stories from across the UK, head to the BBC News website. Hello, you're live with BBC News. I'm Dequesta Burak. Now, protesting Indian farmers have clashed with the police after resuming their march towards the capital, Delhi. There were chaotic scenes at the Shambhu border between the northern states of Punjab and Haryana, where the farmers were stopped on Tuesday. The farmers are demanding minimum guaranteed prices for a range of crops and de uh, debt relief. Farmers staged mass protests in 2020. You're watching BBC News. Stay with me because coming up, we've got the business news and there's something of a GDP bonanza. You are watching BBC News.
Now on BBC News, the latest business news from across the globe. World Business Report. Live from London, this is BBC News. Recession or not, the latest GDP figures for the UK will be released in around an hour and a half's time, outlining the state of the UK economy. Concerns escalate about the state of Japan's economy as it unexpectedly slips into a recession. And it seemed like a good idea at the time, but now tattoo removal has transformed into a big business forecast to reach almost $800 million by 2027. Hello and uh, welcome to our look at the business stories. I'm Lequesta Burak. Uh, official figures on Thursday will show whether the UK went into recession at the end of 2023. That is the term that's used for two consecutive quarters. That's three month periods of negative growth or shrinking. Now the Office for National Statistics is publishing its economic health check for the final three months of the year later. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak said that growing the economy was one of his five key priorities. Well, if the economy did uh, grow in Q4, then the UK will have avoided a recession. So joining me now is Guillermo Felices, who is the Global Investment Strategist at PGIM uh, Fixed Income. Guillermo, thank you and welcome to the programme. What are we expecting? OK, let's uh, take a look at some of the day's other news now. Police have fired tear gas at protesters at one of the state borders north of New Delhi. As clashes with Indian farmers escalate, tens of thousands of farmers have been marching to the capital to demand guaranteed crop prices for their produce. Farmers also want the government to double their income, waive loans and withdraw cases against them, lodged during the last protest in 2021. This comes with just months before national elections in which Prime Minister Narendra Modi is widely expected to win a third term. And if you're heading to Bali anytime soon, it's likely you'll have to pay a $10 tourist tax. Authorities there say any foreigners arriving into the popular resort island will have to pay the fee, with the funds going towards protecting the culture and environment. In recent years, locals have complained of a number of incidents of foreign tourists misbehaving or disrespecting their culture. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. BBC News, bringing you different stories from across the UK. For more stories from across the UK, head to the BBC News website. Hello, you're live with BBC News. I'm Lucrasa Burak. Now, the rocket company SpaceX has moved its legal home from Delaware to Texas. That's according to a post by its founder and boss, Elon Musk, on his social media platform X. He also had a message for the founders of companies in Delaware, saying he recommends moving to another state as soon as possible. Let's discuss this further. Justin Urquhart Stewart, founder of Investment Platform Regionally, has joined me here on the programme. Hello there to you, Justin. Always great to see you. Um, I wonder if you could just give us the background to this uh, latest saga for Elon Musk. OK, that's, that's pushing over a thousand pounds really isn't it that's a, a very costly mistake uh, helen thank you very much indeed thank you well do stay with us because uh, we'll be bringing you shots live hopefully from florida with the latest uh, moon uh, lander launch stay with me here on bbc news
Live from London, this is BBC News. President Biden makes a new appeal for action on gun control after one person is killed and 21 are injured in a shooting at a Super Bowl victory parade in Kansas City. All of a sudden, people started crushing forward. Everybody started running. There was screaming. We didn't know what was happening, but this day and age when people run, you run. Israel's Prime Minister insists his forces will press ahead with a ground offensive in Rafah, despite growing international concern. NASA and SpaceX prepare to launch a mission to take a commercial robotic lander to the moon. And these are the pictures live from Cape Canaveral in Florida, where that launch is due to take place in the next few minutes. We'll be bringing that to you live. Hello and welcome to BBC News. I'm Lequesa Burak. President Biden has made a new appeal for action on gun control after a mass shooting at a Super Bowl victory parade in Kansas City. 22 people were shot. At least one of the victims is dead. Seven have life-threatening injuries. The Kansas police chief said three suspects were in custody and firearms had been recovered. But she added that the motive wasn't yet clear. Chaos broke out when shots were fired west of Union train station in downtown Kansas City. Thousands were celebrating the victory of the Kansas City Chiefs in American football's premier event. Will Vernon reports from Washington. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. BBC News, bringing you different stories from across the UK. For more stories from across the UK, head to the BBC News website. Hello, you're live with BBC News. I'm Lequesta Burak. Now, the Israeli Prime Minister has promised to press ahead with a ground offensive against Hamas in Rafah, despite a growing international outcry. Benjamin Netanyahu said that powerful action was needed after civilians had been allowed to leave battle zones. President Macron of France and Germany's foreign minister, who's held talks with the Israeli leader, have added their voices to those urging Israel against such an offensive. You're watching BBC News. Stay with us. Now on BBC News, the latest business news from across the globe. World Business Report. Live from London, this is BBC News. Concerns escalate about the state of Japan's economy as it unexpectedly slips into a recession. Keeping colours bright whilst protecting the environment. We'll be looking at the latest technology. And it seemed like a good idea at the time, but now tattoo removal has turned into a big business forecast to reach almost $800 million by 2027. Hello and welcome to our look at the business news and we're going to start in Japan where in the last few hours we found out that the country has now slipped into recession. The latest data showed that for the final three months of last year the economy shrank 0.4% compared to a year earlier. Now this could mean that Japan has lost its spot as the world's third largest economy. The IMF had predicted this last year saying the value of Japan's output would fall behind Germany's in US dollar terms. Well, my colleague Marika Oi has been crunching through the numbers for us and I asked her if the disappointing data came as a surprise at all. Michelle Fleury there. OK, let's take a look at some of the day's other news now. When police have fired tear gas at protesters at one of the state borders north of New Delhi as clashes with Indian farmers escalate, tens of thousands of farmers have been marching to the capital demanding guaranteed crop prices for produce. This comes just months before national elections with uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi widely expected to win a third term. Now, if you're heading to Bali anytime soon, it's likely you'll have to pay a $10 tourist tax. 
Authorities there say any foreigners arriving at the popular resort island will have to pay the fee, with funds going towards protecting the island's cultural environment. In recent years, locals have complained of the number of incidents of foreign tourists misbehaving and disrespecting their culture. And the rocket company SpaceX has moved its legal home from Delaware to Texas, according to a post by its founder and boss Elon Musk. On his social media platform X, he also had a message for the founders of companies in Delaware saying he recommends moving to another state as soon as possible. This comes after a judge in Delaware voided Mr. Musk's $56 billion Tesla pen compensation package last month. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. Hello, you're live with BBC News and I'm Laquessa Burak. Paints, textiles, ink, paper and plastics are all dyed to give richer colours, but the high demand comes at a price to the planet. Paul Carter has been to a company trying to find a natural solution to a man-made problem. Helen Quayle, Quayle there, stay with us. There is uh, plenty more coming up right here on BBC News. On BBC News, the latest business news from across the globe. World Business Report. Live from London, this is BBC News. The UK fell into recession at the end of 2023 after the economy shrank by 0.3% in the final three months of the year. Concerns escalate about the state of Japan's economy as it unexpectedly slips into a recession too. Profits are up at Airbus by 4% in 2023 and a full order book for the company, but can they deliver? Hello and welcome uh, to our look at the top business stories, the UK. This morning, we real realised fell into recession at the end of 2023 after the economy shrank by 0.3% in the final three months of the year. Official figures define a recession as two consecutive quarters. That's three months uh, periods of negative or shrinking growth. Well, the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has said that growing the economy was one of his five key priorities. We're going to speak live now to Justin urquhart Stewart, who is the founder of of the investment platform regionally. Hello there to you, Justin. Um, Good morning. Has this come as a surprise? Okay, let's get some of the day's other news now. And as we've been hearing here on BBC News, police have been firing tear gas at protesters at one of the state borders north of New Delhi. As clashes with Indian farmers escalate, tens of thousands of farmers have been marching to the capital to demand guaranteed crop prices for their produce. Farmers also want the government to double their income, waive loans and withdraw cases against them lodged during the last protest in 2021. This comes just months before national elections where Prime Minister Narendra Modi is widely expected to win a third term. And if you're heading to Bali anytime soon, it's likely you'll have to pay a $10 tourist tax. Authorities say any foreigners arriving at the popular island resort will have to pay the fee with the funds going towards protecting uh, culture and environment. In recent years, locals have complained of a number of incidents of foreign tourists misbehaving or disrespecting their culture. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. Hello, you're live with BBC News. I'm Laquesta Burak. Now, European aerospace manufacturer Airbus 
has announced increased operating profits for 2023 um, up by 4% to 5.8 billion euros. That's around 6.2 billion dollars revenues at the world's largest commercial plane maker rose by 11 percent to 65.4 billion with predictions of around 800 commercial jets deliveries in 2024 let's stay with us john grant uh, joins me and he's from uh, oag uh, chief analyst there hello there to you john um so Thank they're doing you. they're doing very well with their with their jets not so well with space Helen Quayle there. Stay with us. There's plenty more coming up here on BBC News.